Following the part one of our meeting on equality in the workplace, we're going to hear now from the rapporteur from each of the 11 breakout groups who will present the three key findings from their group's work today. Um, as you know, we're recording this feedback session and we will upload it on our website. We're trying to maximize the transparency of the process as we move along. So first of all, I want to thank you for stepping forward to be the rapporteur for your group. And we look forward um, very much to hearing uh, the outcome of your discussions today. So let me call first, to, first um, from breakout group one, Lucy Fibbs, please. We would like to suggest that zero hour contracts be abolished and legislation be made for a minimum working hours requirement across all sectors, perhaps closer to 20 hours a week. If a low time contract is accepted from both sides, employer and employee, um, but an individual usually works far more hours, that this extra work can go towards being used for more job security, for example, redundancy or in extraordinary times like we're living in now, COVID-19. We would also include and encourage more flexible working hours, for example, parental leave, not only offered but mandatory and um, perhaps to covering system for someone who is in a carer's role to be fully supported in their extra needs family friendly policies for our second point we would suggest for a move towards transparency for companies and organizations that they must report employees pay by gender along with reporting the progression into senior roles mirroring the gender pay gap information bill 2019 we would suggest where a gap exists that companies and organizations must explain why a gap exists and what steps are being put in place to resolve the matter we would also suggest a series of penalties for companies or organizations who do not strive to resolve this gap lastly we would like to address the segregation of children in our schools we feel we should be moving away from segregating children by gender and from religious-based ethos into a national ethos. Um, we feel by doing so, we allow children access to all subjects, encouraging girls to take part in STEM, STEM subjects and giving boys an opportunity to take subjects like home economics. Okay, that's great, uh, very succinct. Thank you very much, Lucy. Now we're going to come next to breakout group two and speaking for them is Gillian Cullen, please. Firstly, we would like to recommend a reporting process or a publication, a, a way that companies, organizations would bring transparency um, to um, their commitment and their achievements in achieving or narrowing the gender pay gap, in achieving gender equality, dignity at work policies and respecting diversity within their organizations. Secondly, we would recommend a move to a living wage and access for those, particularly in non-unionized workforces, of, to have a voice or a mechanism for um, accessing the same rights or collective bargaining or a similar process that those in unions currently have too. And um, then we would also like to recommend progressive family and carer supports for all caring, not just childcare, including publicly funding childcare, um, which will allow the government to, to leverage um, its, uh, its influence there in achieving and better uh, pay and in a, fem and a mostly feminized uh, workforce there in childcare. Um, and also along those lines that government contracts and public contracts would um, meet a charter and gender equality. So that contracts are no longer just um, cost focused, but um, look at, at the broader um, issues such as gender equality and leverage influence in that way. That's great, thank you very much, Gillian. Uh, again, three well-made points. Next, from group three, Fiona Ryan, please. Our group um, would like to, as so a first one, uh, first point is to like, in, like to introduce a living wage. Um, so introduce a minimum working hours requirement. Um, our second point was uh, publicly funded childcare with contribution from parents, maybe. Uh, maybe attaching the creches to school. So, kids, so a child is starting um, from say the age of two um, and going right away and the benefit of that obviously is that you can start um, gender education or, uh, earlier as well um, collect, and then a third point is collective bargaining and gender pay reporting for any company 
with more than 25 employees. Okay, thanks very much, Fiona. We're beginning to hear certain themes coming through across the different groups, and, um, but with some differences as well. That's what makes it interesting. So let's hear how Group 4 got on, and we're going to hear from Hazel Long about Group 4, please. Hi. Um, the first one we got was a publicly funded childcare, improve access and affordability for childcare universally. Um, so childcare would be our priority. The second one would be the living wage, um, increase the national wage, the living wage, and maybe take a look at the system of the Germans, um, the German system for the medium wage and implementing procedure, procedures they have adopted and also to abolish the zero hours, hours contract. Um, thirdly, the education and mentoring. So we kind of amalgamate these two, so I have both in schools and employment, addressing segregation in schools, stereotyping needs to address, tackle education system and ensure equal angles both for female and male, maybe more career guidance given for equal opportunities, but also in the employment, mentoring, mentoring employees to maybe give them even more progression and opportunities within the employment and just um, at the end um, consideration into abolishment of same-sex schools so hopefully i got that across you did get that across loud and clear thanks very much hazel uh next we're moving to group five uh pamela carney um, the group five would like to see um in the employ employment sector We'd like to see legislation to introduce the transparency of the gender pay gap in companies, blind recruitment where possible, um, and the suggestion of an equality officer, as we've seen with COVID officers, to support employees in companies and to have someone to stand up and help them in their, in their search for equality. We'd like to see parental leave for both parents, however that family unit may be made up. The group would also like to see the introduction of the living wage um, with subsidies for small and medium in enterprises. In education, we would like to see en education at an early age to reduce gender, gender stereotypes and improve quality and in the workplace to roll out seminars or presentations on equality and discrimination. We feel there's a need to remove the unconscious bias and behaviours that currently are, take place in the workplace. Thanks to Pamela for that. Um, I think again some themes are coming through from almost every group and that's very interesting. So let's hear now what went on in Group 6. Mary Faulknahan, please. Group 6 decided that we would like to see the living wage rate of pay implemented for everybody and that there should be a universal basic income for people who are not working, for people on disability benefits or illness benefits. Um, we also decided that all employees should get contracts of employment with information on employment rights, rates of pay, etc. But that this should be in plain English, so that people can understand what they're getting and uh, not in legal legalese. And uh, that the current laws should be enforced. Uh, we also thought that companies or organisations with 50 or more employees should have mandatory transparent reporting systems in place for all payments made to employees, including bonuses, rates of pay, and uh, to be reported on a gender basis. And um, we also, we were sneaking in a fourth one here, that um, equal emphasis on all types of employment should be given in schools, so that children understand the value of all types of employment, and that they can make a good income from all types of work not just the academic work, but other work as well. Thank you very much again. Um, uh, you're not the only group to put an emphasis on the education side of things, as well as picking up common um, themes. Uh, that's very helpful. Now we come to group seven, Lee Mokali, please. The vast majority of us agreed with the national living wage. Um, obviously, you know, it, steps should be taken to ensure that it doesn't kind of fall below or near the minimum wage it actually has to be a distinct separate policy um, um that allows people to literally live um so that was virtually unanimous um, in our group and um, the next one was effectively a kind of a national pr awareness changing attitudes campaign that should be directed at careers guidance counsellors, teachers, parents, people who influence young people, that, you know, and students mm -hmm. uh, in secondary schools in particular themselves about the choices that are out there. 
Um, like one example was given about somebody at the group who wanted to be um, an electrician, but she was told by her parents that that wasn't right for her because she was a girl and she was told to do a BA instead. And now all of her electrician friends are making more money. So in other words, you know, and even things like influencing RTE, you know, characters in soaps, you know, who are doing non-stereotypical roles, be they men or women, you know, to actually influence people about the choices that are out there and that they shouldn't be sectioned into jobs for men and jobs for women. So we need a national change of awareness, a, a serious mm -hmm. PR campaign directed at people to make these decisions or influence the decision makers. Um, and then thirdly, uh, there was, uh, you know, the care workers and, you know, people living in care, you know, low paid care roles, you know, say in ch uh, crashes and childcare units and so forth. I mean, they are qualified workers. They have to actually get a level six, I think, to actually work there. Yet they seem to be very low paid. And I think, you know, we want to uh, have recognition for people with in low pay, uh, but quali who are qualified, who have got certificates. So that includes things like security work and other jobs as well. You know, that we want them to be paid according to the fact that they are qualified, you know, to do these roles. They've studied to do these roles and so forth. Um, so that was that was point three, you know, um, we felt, you know, pay and recognition given to those, you know, uh, in those low, those important sectors, you know, like if you're working childcare, I mean, you have some of the responsibilities of a primary teacher in terms of your duty of care, mm -hmm. you know, so why shouldn't that be recognised in terms of wages um, and in terms of general respect uh, for their qualifications? Okay, thanks very much, Liam. That's great to get uh, okay. all of the thoughts from your group. Now, group number eight is next, Adam Warren. If you can come in, please. Refreshing to hear, uh, like you say, the, the themes that are kind of emanating from the discussion. And, and like I said, it's refreshing to see that other groups have, have discussed uh, very, very similar uh, and had similar recommendations. Um, group eight, uh, we um, decided that our three most important uh, as we saw them, were in an effort to address uh, low pay and feminized job, uh, that we look to have a pay equalization uh, across industry in recognition of qualifications. Um, because uh, that's what we believed uh, was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, the second recommendation was, uh, like most other groups, uh, Group 8 were. Uh, adamant that the implementation of a living wage um, is hugely important. Um, while cognizant of the impact on small and medium business, but um, it's something that has to happen and that will address, we believe will, will go some, a long part of the way to addressing um, any disparity. Uh, and then the third point we wanted to make was that uh, we'd like to recommend or advise that uh, progressive and family policy be developed. Um, to include uh, affordable childcare and, and parental leave and the likes of it. Um, there was lots of other discussion uh, around abolishing zero-hour contracts um, and the abolition of unpaid work because there was some testaments to the unpaid that work that 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 um, uh, the low-paid jobs do where people stay on after hours for cleaning duties that 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 would go unpaid and and the abolition of that is. is important as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like I say, a common theme um, to a lot of the groups. Yeah. Okay, that's great. It's very good to hear both where the groups agreed and disagreed. That all helps us build up the overall picture. Um, now next we come to group nine. Uh, Jerry Crowley, please. Hi Catherine, hi members. So hi, from Jerry. group nine, it's common themes again. We start off with uh, number one, childcare to make it affordable to revolutionize the policies, practice, procedures, and increase state funding, to increase the subsidy and support of childcare, particularly for low paid, uh, disabled, or certain minority and migrant workers, to look at that piece. Then on number two, we have a strap line to explain, educate, and enforce, the three E's we're calling them. And we're saying that there has to be explanation and education for all employees and employers around terms, conditions, work practice, et cetera. And on the enforcement side, we'd like to see an ombudsperson to take forward any issues uh, in relation to uh, terms, conditions, and work practice and uh, uh, the gender equality. 
a, a sideline to that, we want to see company accounts, companies, corporate, big and small, have to produce accounts annually. Within their company accounts, we want to see potentially a piece on the gender pay gap and gender uh, equality practices within that company. And that could be submitted back to the ombudsperson or that particular office. Mm -hmm. uh, then our point three is to look at applying the appropriate uh, pathway and support uh, to increase the minimum work wage to the living wage. And also as other members have called out our tables to put in place practices and supports for small term businesses as we say, there's uh, the Small Firms Association apply 97% of people in Ireland, uh, small uh, businesses of 10 to 15 to 20 people. Supports are in place for them if we are really serious about implementing uh, a, a standard or a bar of standard for uh, the living wage. That's it from us. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Jerry. Again, very clear and, and precise. And um, then in group number 10, reporting for, for your group was Noel Ryan, please. On the childcare, we'd like to see some reform of the sector and we'd like the government to have a long, hard look at the insurance costs and maybe introduce tax allowances or tax breaks for parents and for the right of the employees to be to organise and be recognised by their employers. And on the living wage, we'd like to see a move towards the living wage, maybe inflation proofed. Uh, uh, and abolish, abolish zero hour contracts and wage transparency. And on the third point, we have either a minister or an ombudsperson appointed for equality. And that's about it. Okay. Again, thank you very much. That was very clear, and uh, we know exactly what your group wants to recommend. And uh, finally, Group 11, and thank you for your patience, Anna O'Brien. Um, so Group 11 um, on childcare, um, we determined that we'd like to see more government intervention in the form of subsidies, tax credits, or perhaps even state-run facilities um, to help parents offset the costs of childcare. Um, on education, we would like to see education throughout all levels of schooling and the workplace on removing gender stereotypes, providing disability awareness, um, sharing caring roles between both men and women, and improving visibility on how people can gain assistance if they're experiencing discrimination or exploitation in the workplace. And on working and the living wage, um, we would like to see more security in place for contracts and the re removal of zero hour contracts. Um, we'd also like to um, see a review for a path to move the minimum wage to the living wage while having supports in place, in place to prevent job loss and helping small firms engage with the process. Um, and we'd also like to see um, some enforcement of regulations that are already in place to help with these things. And that's it from Group 11. Okay, well, a very big thank you to all of you. Um, I think there we have a very good harvest um, with very concrete recommendations, um, with nuances from different groups. So that will help, help us to build up a, a composite picture. Um, so I want to thank um, each of you for your continuing commitment and ongoing engagement and for being um, volunteering to present your um, breakout groups conclusions to, to first of all to the rest of the assembly and then to the wider world because this session is being recorded and it will be uploaded on the website in the next couple of days. So thank you very much indeed for all of that. As I said, the work continues. We're now in a rhythm of meeting roughly once a month. So the next meeting is on the 5th of December and the emails and the videos will be coming out to you week by week as previously. But as I promised, we're going to send you slightly less um, for next time round, so you can have a little bit of a pre-Christmas break. Um, and uh, we'll resume with part two of our very interesting discussions on work um, on the 5th of December. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves and uh, we look forward to seeing you all again on the 5th of September, 5th of December, excuse me. Thanks very much. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>